Shane Lucas. Hey! Now I get that compared to everybody else that's spoken today, I'm the one that's looking like the materialistic weasel. <laughs> but I, th I think it's fair to say that unless you've got your sales and therefore your profits in order, you know, everybody in this room is committed to giving, otherwise you wouldn't be here today. And really it's giving through your business, and if your business isn't capable of generating a level of income to enable you to give as much as you'd like, then also that needs your focus, doesn't it, to be able to, to do that. Now most of us, when we set up a business or take over a business in some of our cases, we, we decide on the capacity that is our typical life, our working week, our month, whatever it might be. We decide that actually I'm going to allocate a certain amount of that to running the business. A certain amount of that to spending with my family and with my friends and on my health. But the sad reality often is that as time goes by, the business starts to consume more and more of our lives, doesn't it? at the expense of spending quality time doing the stuff that we really love doing. And quite often, therefore, we can start to feel like we're drowning. Our time, as I've just illustrated there, starts to get eaten up. Um, and, and we just start to increase the amount of hours that we're spending working. The income that we're taking as well starts to diminish. There are cheap competitors out there. There are a growing number of cheap competitors out there who kind of set the price that we can charge and therefore we have to work more hours to be able to, to, to get the income that we need. So that starts to suffer. And then that level of enjoyment, the enthusiasm that we once had for the business that we wanted to create, that starts to wane as well. That sense of fulfillment that we want to get out of it starts to suffer. In fact, this trend hasn't changed in the 20 years since I first saw this trend. 56% of businesses die within the first five years. And this is obviously showing the survival rate, but again, the, the key word there is survival, because even ones that make it this far and beyond, in some cases, are just surviving. They're struggling with their time, their income, and their enjoyment. So the impact of improving your sales and your profits are that obviously you're going to generate more of an income, which you can use to invest in getting more people to help you with your business. In fact, you can afford to take on better skilled people that's going to shortcut maybe implementing some of the things that you need doing. It's going to free up your time to focus on the business rather than working in it. It's going to enable you to maybe invest in getting some external help. Most of the most successful businesses out there use the external help and support of a great business advisor. And of course it's going to enable you to give much more back. It's fair to say, isn't it, that where you are right now in your business is the result, the consequence of decisions and actions that you've made in history. Yeah, over time, they've all got you to where you are now. And so it's possibly fair to say, therefore, that if you continue to do what you've always done, you're going to perhaps get similar results going forward. Now, arguably, the environment's changing, technology's changing, so maybe that's not the case, but I'm giving an optimistic view here going forward. Now I've mentioned sales, but actually behind sales there are different drivers. Quite often we look at sales in isolation and we kind of think, well actually to increase sales we just need more customers, work with more people. But there are actually different facets of sales that if we focus on these different drivers then we can improve that sales figure and in many cases the profits as well because just getting more customers doesn't necessarily make you more profitable, does it? So what I'm going to do in this section now is just go through and show you how to, maybe just one strategy for each of these different drivers, how you can improve them. Uh, marginal gains was mentioned earlier, and this is really a concept of marginal gains. Little tiny improvements can make a big difference overall by improving these things. Now in terms of where you are now, in these different areas, uh, sometimes that's difficult to ascertain. So your best ally, who I will reveal to you very shortly, is probably the best person that can help you ascertain where you are now on these different figures. So let's have a look at the first driver. That's pricing. Now most of us feel that the competition sets the price. If we try and charge more, then the customers will go elsewhere. <laughs> now one of the reasons for that is because of the way that we position ourselves. Most businesses out there position themselves in a very, very similar way to their competitors, which therefore means that the only way that they can differentiate themselves to their customers is what? Right. It's price, absolutely. So by differentiating yourself from the competition sufficiently, you're all, you're all going to have a, 
uh, a core offering in common, but by differentiating yourself, making your values, your purpose, your passion come through, and, um, increasing your customer service, those types of things is going to enable you to differentiate yourself, then actually price can no longer be a deciding factor, which enables you then to better value price your services, and as long as your differentiation matches your customers' needs, then they're going to be much more inclined to go with you. So that's just one strategy on pricing. And we can see that just by affecting our pricing and just bringing that up a little bit, then actually the impact that that's going to have on the business is already that it's going to just take it up just a little notch going forward. So the next one is customers. And we've all got a certain amount of customers, whether it's 100 new customers a month that we deal with, depending on our business, or whether we work with the same 100 customers for several years. Getting more customers is obviously going to help us grow that business, isn't it? Now, one of the most powerful and yet freest ways of getting new customers is a very simple strategy that very few people ever implement. And it's called asking for a referral. So I'm going to share this very simple strategy with you. If you were to ask, if you've got 100 customers and you were to ask every single one of them if they would give you a referral, normally the recommendation would be to ask for three referrals, then let's say 50% of them gave you a referral and you had a sit-down meeting with every single one of those 50 referred clients and you converted half of them because a referral is a much warmer lead. So regardless of whatever your conversion rate might typically be, if somebody's referred somebody, then they're much more likely to buy from you than just a cold lead. So on that basis alone, by asking every single one of your customers for a referral, then you're going to increase your customer base. And of course, they will be at a higher rate because you've already put your prices up. That's the impact of increasing the customers. <laughs> Your conversion rate. So if you were to analyse every single inquiry that you get, your inquiries might be in the form of just telephone calls coming in, it could be a website inquiry, it could just be emails from marketing, whatever it might be. But if you were to imagine that, whether it's for you, whether it's every 12 months, you might get 100 inquiries, maybe it's per month, maybe it's per week, whatever that is for you, if you imagine that your current conversion rate is maybe 25%, so one in four, then every single one of these people who get in touch with you in some way, you're effectively losing three people to convert one. Which actually, when you look at it on something like this, you start to see that all of those opportunities have been lost that you've not managed to convert. So what if you could increase your conversion rate, even just a few percent? Then what impact would that have on your business? Now again, there are a multitude of different strategies that you can use to increase your conversion rate. The one I'm going to share with you right now is just Reducing the risk. It can be a big risk for somebody to move from one supplier to another, can't it? Whatever that supplier is. So reducing the risk in a couple of different ways you can do that. One is offering a guarantee on your services. Few people offer a guarantee for the work that they do. And it demonstrates confidence. It reduces the risk. Or offer a trial, whether that's free or significantly reduced. So that, again, it's just a, an easier transition for them to make. <coughs> or both, of course. So let's say you do that for the sake of argument and for the sake of ease on my diagram, you increase your conversion rate from 1 in 4 to 1 in 3, then actually we can see straight away that that's made quite a difference to the amount of people that we burn, if you like, that we lose as a result. So before we know it, we've, we've started to increase the number of customers that we take on by a lot in this particular case. And again, applying the impact of increasing your conversion rate to your business is going to show the, the, a, a significant improvement on your business potential going forward. So what about how long your customers stay with you? What if the average customer stays with you um, X amount of months before they move on to another supplier? And what if you could encourage them to just stay and extend that stay <coughs> just a little bit longer, maybe the same amount again, or maybe just a 50% uh, again? Then that's going to increase that level of loyalty. It's going to make them stay and pay for your services much longer because it's obviously cheaper and easier to get a customer to stay with you for longer than it is to acquire a brand new customer, isn't it? So again, one great strategy there is just to massively improve your customer service. And Derek's just given us some fantastic advice on doing that. And a tip from me, really, is, is get regular customer feedback. Yes, they'll tell you what you're doing wrong, they'll tell you what you're doing right. And if you demonstrate that you're acting on that, you're demonstrating that you're listening to them, then they're going to value you much more and stay with you longer. So that's 
a strategy for getting customers to stay with you longer. How much they spend with you on each transaction can also be improved and increased. So my next example is something that we will all be familiar with. We're all on the receiving end of this particular strategy on a regular basis. Well, I say all, I'm making an assumption here. But actually, we don't see this as a, a bit of a salesy type thing. If you go into McDonald's and ask for a burger, what will they ask you? Do you want fries with that? Yeah. And if you ask for burger and fries? Would you like to upgrade to a meal? <laughs> if you ask for a meal, what will they ask? <laughs> Do you, you're all trained, aren't you? Do you want to go large, actually, is the, is the next question, isn't it? <laughs> and if you walk in and say, can I have a meal, and I'd like to go large, they'll still ask you, would you like a side with that? <laughs> so McDonald's strategy for getting customers to pay more per transaction is just asking great questions every single time. You don't walk into McDonald's and think they just sell, 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 but it's a great strategy that they use. On average, McDonald's increase the amount the, per transaction by 88% just by asking those questions for every single customer that walks in. I, I can't give you an example for your business because there's such a, a, a variety in here, but if you were to sit down and think about what types of questions can I ask of people when they come in, I dare say there's a, a, a variety of questions you could have up your sleeve. Uh, the frequency then, so how often they come back and buy from you. And the obvious one there that, again, we're all subject to on a regular basis is things like loyalty cards. I took my card the other day to have it validated, and of course they gave me the loyalty card, come back five times, and I'll get the sixth one for free. But what are the types of things that you can do to get your existing customers coming back to you more frequently? So again, we can see that the impact on implementing just a little change on all of these is going to have an overall much larger impact on the business going forward. Finally, the, the, the last one really is identified as systems, and it's about having that consistency as well. So if you do some of this some of the time, then you're not going to see the great results that you'd like. If you put systems in place, then A, you're going to make sure that you're not missing out these little steps yourselves, but also you can make sure that if you employ a team of people to be delivering the, the types of services or the sales or whatever it might be for you, then exactly what you want to happen happens every single time. So the last one is about putting the systems in place. So as I mentioned earlier, the benefits to your business alone are that you know, you, you're, you're creating a business that's much more profitable, which you can then reinvest in to recruit more people, to uh, allow you to work on your business, and of course, enables you to give more. The impact on you personally is that it starts to enable you to free up some of that time that you can then spend doing the stuff that you really love. So I mentioned earlier your best ally. Now, I'm sure most of you in the room will have figured this out by now, who I'm referring to. I'm actually referring to your accountant. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Big sigh of relief from some people as well. Why your accountant? Well, your accountant understands business, don't they? And they work in a variety of different sectors as well. Your, your average accountant probably works with 100, 200 uh, clients in different sectors. They're picking up the different strategies that they do. They can apply them to your business through these conversations. They are rated the most trusted advisor to businesses. They're experts with numbers and they're great at analysing the numbers. And they've got full access to your numbers as well. So they can really help you ascertain what are the numbers that if small changes were made to them would have a big impact on your business. Now there is a but, I'm sorry to say. And I hope my next slide doesn't offend any of the accountants in the room. There are some accountants that their business model is that they purely focus on do, uh, producing compliance work. Now that works, that's a legal requirement for businesses, but it's all some accountants focus on. And they'll just churn them out, they'll churn them out, they'll churn them out. Like I say, for many businesses that's fine, that ticks their box. But there are other businesses that need and could have much more from their accountants as well. Because to me, the, the, the producing accounts is just a rear view look on a business, isn't it? It's showing what happened, in some cases, months ago. And we're living in such a fast-paced, changing environment these days that we need more real-time information, yes, but looking at the business potential, looking at the impact that little changes can have on that business going forward. So your forward-thinking accountant, yes, they'll deliver all of the typical types of services that a traditional, conventional accountant wouldn't deliver, but they will take the time to look at your profits and sales and go through strategies like I've just shared with you to help you improve your sales and profitability. They'll help you strengthen your cash flow. So if your accountant 
is purely focused in this area, then I would request that the accountants in this room raise their hand, let themselves be known. That's accountants, raise your hand, please. Yeah. <laughs> because if you're a business owner and your accountant isn't helping you grow your business, my recommendation is that this evening, tomorrow, lunch break, have a conversation with some of the accountants in this room because I know many of them and I know that they can help you with this. Thank you very much.